We know that the American people are sick and tired of being lied to by the government about wars. And as evidence here today, and in the nation's capital today, where around 300, 300 organizations marched, people are seeing the lies of this war. And we are here today to expose those lies. This may be controversial to some who hear it due to the propaganda they've heard. And it's important that we represent the anti-war movement today by remaining calm and steadfast in the face of opposition. We have a team of de-escalators in orange vests um, if necessary, and we ask that you get them involved if you need help handling any altercations. But we're asking that you don't get in any with any potential disruptors, and that the focus is our message of unity within the left anti-war movement and not on disunity. Thank you. So are you with me today? We're going to start out with a chant. Money for health and education. Money for health and education. Money for jobs and education. Money for jobs and education. Woo! Can you feel the energy of you all today? We can feel it across the country as we are gathered on a specific date with a common purpose and a common enemy, the U.S. military machine. We are gathered on a specific date, the weekend of the 20th anniversary of the U.S. invasion into Iraq, a, blue, a brutal and illegal invasion that led to the devastation across both the country and the region and resulted in the death of over a million Iraqis. Shame! Shame! And it was all based on a lie. Of course, this isn't the only country the U.S. or U.S. offensive military alliances like NATO and AFRICOM, have decimated. We could go on and on about the 78-day bombing campaign in Yugoslavia, the coups in Guatemala, Chile, and Haiti, the invasion into Afghanistan, the stealing of resources into, in Syria, and the funding of apartheid in occupied Palestine. Point being, too many countries know the wrath and the power of this militarized country. And so in the words of Claudia de la Cruz of the People's Forum, and an endorser of this event, we have a collective responsibility to remember. We must remember and retell the stories and injustices experienced in these countries, especially as people living in the belly of the beast and the imperial core. We must remember that the U.S. has never intervened benevolently anywhere. So friends, we have a common purpose here today. We want an end to all wars. We want to stop the wars. What do we want? Stop the wars. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Stop the wars. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Stop the wars. And when do we want it? Now. And if we don't get it, Shut it down. if we don't get it, Shut it down. and so not only are people gathering in this city today in Seattle, but across the country as part of a national call initiated by the Answer Coalition, the People's Forum, and Code Pink to demand fund people's needs, not the war machine, and for peace in Ukraine. Nationally, this march has received over 200 endorsements from organizations across the globe. This shows us that the working class people are not interested in endless wars. They are interested in an investment in peace. It is also a stark comparison to the hundreds of thousands who came out to demand an end to the Iraq or Vietnam War because it was Americans who were dying. But we are here to say we care about the Ukrainians dying too, as pawns a part of a NATO-induced conflict. We care about the working class people dying to fight the rich man's wars, and we are here to say enough. We're not just saying it. We are out here acting to demand it and make this a reality. An end to U.S. global domination and its involvement in never-ending worldwide destruction. So we all have a common purpose. Ending U.S.-led wars. So we must have a common strategy, especially as things escalate towards unprecedented destruction in Ukraine and in Eastern Europe due to NATO and U.S. aggression. What is our common strategy? It is to mobilize and act now because the U.S. will continue to involve itself in more and more wars. And that is what the Answer Coalition believes in. We believe in the power of mass organizations and the power of united people to bring about a stop to this nonsense.
So not only do we have a collective responsibility to remember, but a collective duty to organize and act. To organize over and over and over again to defeat the U.S. war machine and put a halt to its global destruction. Today, over 19 organizations have endorsed this rally, and we have a wide variety of speakers who will make connections between the war abroad and the war at home, and all the other struggles intimately connected to U.S. imperialism. Money for jobs and education! Money for jobs and education! Now, Drew will introduce our next speaker. Taylor, appreciate that. Can I get uh, folks to kind of move up a little bit so we can fill this out a little bit, get a little bit of, okay, appreciate that, appreciate that. So we have, like Taylor mentioned, a lot of uh, endorsing organizations and a lot of uh, folks that are gonna speak today. So the first people that we have is we have uh, veteran Steph with the Veterans for Peace. Um, who is speaking on behalf of Veterans for Peace, Chapter 92, Seattle. She's a former Army, former Army reservist who refused activation in the first Gulf War, Operation Desert Storm in 1991. She was briefly incarcerated at Fort Knox and then discharged in lieu of court martials. She worked to counter military recruiters in schools and to support military members who resist as conscientious objectors. Veterans for Peace is a global organization of military veterans and allies whose collective efforts are to build a culture of peace by using their experience and lifting their voices. We inform the public of true causes of war and the enormous cost of wars with an obligation to heal the wounds of wars. Their network is comprised of over 140 chapters worldwide whose work includes educating the public advocating for dismantling of war economy and providing services that assist veterans and victims of war and more significantly working to end all wars. Please welcome Steph. Good afternoon everyone. My name is Steph. Support the troops who refuse to fight. Um, in the lead up to the first Gulf War, Operation Desert Storm, I was an Army Reservist. I joined when I was a high school student. And I refused to fight in Operation Desert Storm. It was obvious that it was bullshit. Can I say that? Thank you. I'm, I'm saddened and angered that 20 years ago, in 2003, the second Gulf War started. And it went on for a decade. Shame, indeed. I just want to encourage you, if you have family members who are in the military, if you have family members that are veterans, if you have family members who are considering enlistment, to discourage them. Support the troops who refuse to fight. <laughs> veterans for Peace unequivocally condemns Russia's horrific invasion of Ukraine. We maintain that the people of Ukraine had the right to self-determination and to lead their own struggle for national liberation. As a war resistor, I'm proud that Veterans for Peace supports military refusers from every nation. We support Russian resistors. We support Ukrainian resistors. Today, I learned that Russian resistors are being deported from our country, people who've come here because they're refusing to participate in war and we're not providing them security and safety. It's been determined that their fear of being conscripted is not a credible threat. Again, bullshit. We, deserve, we owe it to people, individual soldiers, from no matter what country they come from, to support when they have made a dissension based on their consciences to refuse to hurt and kill other people. I would like to say, in order to promote a just and moral resolution to Russia's invasion, I believe we should amplify and demand that Russia withdraw from the, 
from Ukraine now, that we support all war resistors, that we say no to Western militarism and no to NATO expansion. Again, support your veterans. Support those troops who take a great risk to refuse to fight. Thank you. Let's give it up for Steph and all the veterans who've refused to serve in these imperialist wars. Because when they lie, we die. When they lie, people 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 die. And it's not, we're not out here just to call the lies. We're out here to call out all the funding that goes to these U.S. war machine. And we're in Seattle, which is one of the headquarters, one of the biggest places for the Boeing administration to make its weapons of destruction. And it gets funding, and it's making a lot of money off of this war. And so our next speaker is Amy. They're with the Resist U.S.-led war uh, campaign. Um, they represent the Seattle chapter of Resist U.S.-led war, and we'll be discussing their campaign to cut ties with war profiteers at the University of Washington. Please welcome them. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out today to protest on the 20th anniversary of the U.S. invasion of Iraq. My name is Amy, and I'm a member of the Seattle chapter of the U.S. Resist of the Resist U.S.-led War Movement. We are, a group of, we are a group of students and community members organizing against imperialist wars and fighting to demilitarize the University of Washington. We are standing with the Answer Coalition today on this 20th anniversary fighting to end seemingly endless imperialist wars, fighting to center people's needs over war profiteering. Let's be clear. Imperialist profit is what drives the endless wars of aggression around the globe. In order to end the war machine, we have to expose and oppose those who profit off of war. The companies that profit off of war would prefer that we ignore the ways they cause death and destruction for their own imperialist gain. Resist campaign aims to expose Boeing's insidious war profiteering and calls on you to cut ties with Boeing. Allowing Boeing to benefit from its connections to institutions of higher education is a sound financial decision for the University of Washington, but it is one that is morally bankrupt. Boeing funds buildings, internships, research, and research at UW to funnel students into the military industrial complex. The College of Engineering proudly boasts Boeing as one of their top employers. They're not only one of the top employers at UW, but one of the top three largest weapon manufacturing companies in the world. <laughs> Most of us know Boeing as a commercial airplane company. The reality is that over 50% of Boeing's profits come from so-called defense. Boeing poses as an inclusive and progressive company because it's giving $10 million to construct the interdisciplinary engineering building at UW. We know they are not funding this building because they care about students or education. They care about exploiting students' knowledge and research for their profit. You know this partnership with Boeing plans to market an inclusive curriculum in order to appeal to UW students. They work with engineering student groups that support minorities like the Society of Women Engineers and National Society of Black Engineers to optimize the student to Boeing career pipeline. They purposely fund these student groups to distract from the divorce, disproportionate effects their war profiteering has on minorities. I'm an undergraduate student at UW, and I'm planning on majoring in engineering. This quarter, I spent my Thursdays walking from a lab taught by a professor in the William E. Boeing Aeronautics and Astronautics Department to the Aerospace Engineering Research Building. From the name of these buildings, you might think the class has something to do with aeronautics but it's actually my engineering statics class. This class focuses on how to solve for reaction forces when beams or cables are not in motion, and it's a required class for four different majors in the College of Engineering. That means that students across four different majors walk into buildings all quarter long. That glorifies Boeing's contribution to engineering. Boeing hopes that every time we see their name on a building, we will idolize them a little bit more, that we will strive towards a Boeing career without asking too many questions about who our engineering work harms in order for the company to profit. 
To put it lightly, Boeing involvement is hard to miss for engineering and non-engineering students alike throughout campus. I wanted to become a mechanical engineer to work on prosthetics and mobility aids for disabled people, but as I've learned more about Boeing's involvement at UW through Resist, I realized most mechanical engineering careers involve working for the Department of Defense or war profiteers. I want to work for the people. I want to make the world more accessible, so I'm looking at how I can do that as a civil engineer instead. Boeing's intertwinement with UW has forced me to reconsider my future career. The university is providing space and labor to innovate to advancements to control drones, missiles, and aircraft, all of which Boeing makes. The U.S. War Machine's 2023 budget of $858 billion Yay! funds Boeing to provide weapons, military assistance to Ukraine, including at least $650 million of weapons. We oppose U.S. NATO aggression and the military buildup with Russia over Ukraine. Since its founding, NATO has acted as an extension of U.S.-led war and imperialism. NATO and its proponents will never achieve real peace and security for the masses of the world. What does it mean to say no to endless war, U.S. wars? How do we fund people's needs instead of the war machine? We fight back. We call out companies like Boeing that are hiding in plain sight on our university campus while accepting billions of dollars in funding from the Department of Defense for their war technology. We talk to our friends and families about war profiteers. War profiteers are afraid. That's why they have to hide, deceive, bribe, and manipulate. They're afraid that their future labor pool, UW students, will come to see them as they really are. They're afraid of a conscious and organized working class. And they should be afraid. Every part, every part of the U.S. war machine must be confronted by the people. To attack every angle, we're building an anti-imperialist, anti-fascist, united front for us here in Seattle. The work begins on UW's campus. We demand the University of Washington cut ties with Boeing and demilitarize UW. Okay, I'm going to end with a little chant. Um, it goes, who? We, when, now, we're going to bring imperialism down. Who, we, when, now, we're going to bring imperialism down. Who, we, when, now, we're going to bring imperialism down. Who, we, when, now, we're going to bring imperialism down. Thank you. Appreciate that. Give it up one more time for Amy. Appreciate highlighting student issues and not letting these certain uh, folks that involve themselves with the war machine just get away with strangleholding folks from the beginning. So we need to, I know everyone has a company in their minds that they're thinking of when you think of war machine and stranglehold. But Right now, we're going to highlight that Boeing tip. So we have another event coming up, and it is on March 26th at the Museum of Flight. So we want to highlight that. So if you guys are interested, come out to that next event. It's at 1 p.m., March 26th at the Museum of Flight. So the next speaker that we have now is Carlos, I believe, who's going to be speaking on behalf of ANSWER. Um, Carlos is a longtime organizer with Act Now to Stop War and End Racism, or the Answer Coalition, which was founded days after the 9-11 invasion to resist the wars that the U.S. military would pursue. Since then, Answer has been in the streets, resisting every war the U.S. has been involved in and led. All right, Carlos, come on. This week marks the 20th anniversary of the 2003 invasion of Iraq, a war that led to the loss of hundreds of thousands of Iraqi lives, thousands of U.S. soldiers dead or facing life-altering injuries. This war was also significant for me and perhaps for many of you as the first of our generation's consciousness, rise of our consciousness to the U.S. war machine. This U.S. war machine has proven itself to be equally unrelenting as it is evil. Since 2003, the Pentagon's budget has even doubled. 
It is normal now for every generation to have its own war, its own neglected veterans, its own shame. Every new generation continues to have to bear witness to the millions of lives lost wrought by an imperialist war machine that perpetuates military and economic war across the planet. A machine which enthralls its own government to prefer to keep killing people abroad instead of helping its own people. The White House would have you believe that this process is abstract or even beneficial for security. The stark reality is that these wars deprive our community of their own futures and they drain our own commonwealth. A hundred billion was sent for weapons in Ukraine. Weapons we know are meant to prolong a conflict for geopolitical gains rather than any altruistic reason. These funds could have easily have paid for 24 billion for loan forgiveness, for example. 85 billion for repairing school infrastructure. 20 billion for paid family leave. 40 billion for childcare. And 22 billion for two years of free community college. I named these plans precisely because they were the same ones deemed not too long ago too expensive and cut last year. It's time to openly call out the disease of rampant militarism and imperialism and join a movement to stop these wars. Our tax dollars should be spent on life, providing health care, better infrastructure, education, and preparing our communities for climate change. The United States could have prevented this war, and it could stop this war now. The people, the, real, the U.S. people, have no interest in bleeding Russia and Ukraine, or in challenging China. Our true enemy remains the military-industrial complex, which profits on the belief that other countries are our enemies. Let's all rise up and grow a movement that seeks peace, justice on this planet, and no to war. Thank you. Carlos brings up a good point. We need to fund the people's needs, not the war machine. 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 And while we talk about wars abroad, it's also important we talk about the wars at home. And we have a war going on against black America. We saw people rise out in millions in 2020, and we still haven't resolved the systemic issues within our society. And that's why there's so many organizations working to change that. The next person we're going to um, have speak is Bunchy with the Black Panther Party of Washington. The Black Panther Party was founded in 1966 by Huey P. Newton and Bobby Seale as a mechanism to defend the black community from police terrorism. As the party grew and expanded its ideology, they became a testament to the her eternal hunger for liberation that permeates the proletariat class. From free health cl clinics to free breakfast for children to the development of a dedicated liberation school that outperformed public institutions, the Black Panther Party went above and beyond to meet the needs of the people. In 2020, after the very public murders of Benny Branch, Manny Ellis, Saeed Joaquin, and of course George Floyd, Ovanayo X initiated the formation of the Black Panther Party of Washington. Much like the originators, the Panthers, based in Tacoma, follow the 10-point platform drafted by Huey and work to see the collective vision of the Panthers of old come to fruition. The BPP has no interest in liberal reform movements, only in educating the masses until their level of political understanding reaches a level where true revolution is possible. Please welcome Bunchy. All power to the people. 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 That's more like, yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna need to do that because I apologize. Some of my comrades seem to be somewhat vertically challenged. <laughs> or maybe I'm just vert vertically extra. I don't know which one it is, but it's something. So. We're here because nobody wants war, right? 
Nobody wants a war. I mean, Russia and, war and Ukraine shouldn't be at war right now, right? And America shouldn't be supporting either side of any kind of conflict, right? I mean, in all actuality, imperialism should not be waging war around the globe, right? I just wanted to make sure we are here for the same reason. Okay, so let's see. I'm, I got some notes here because I get, I tend to get in my feelings sometimes. So uh, let's talk about what imperialism actually is. Does anybody know what imperialism actually is? Imperialism is a policy of extending a country's power and influence through diplomacy or military force. Now, the imperialists that I know are not very good at diplomacy, which only leaves one other option. We had our PE class on Thursday, and we discussed valid reasons for war. Now see, I know this is an anti-war rally, but there are valid reasons to go to war. The only two valid reasons we were able to find were in defense of your life or to liberate you from oppression. I may be mistaken, but in my analysis, I can't imagine that any of the imperialist wars that we've seen have taken place for either of those reasons. Generally, war that we see is simply a means to an end of wrangling all of the resources of growing nations that are still developing so that people who already have power can control those things, even people. And somebody would say, well, why would you say that? Well, for one, I'm black, so I've kind of seen it firsthand. But secondly, all I got to do is look at the news, go online and scroll down CNN or whatever, and I see it all over the globe. I see people dying in Ukraine. I see people dying in Africa, people dying because China wants to be the big dog on the block. <laughs> There's only one thing you need to remember. The reality of the matter is until you take the necessary steps to return the material uh, resources to the people that they need in order to control their lives, war will continue to be a reality. Imperialism will continue to be a reality. Only by shaking our chains and by not allowing the boundaries that have been drawn between us to continue to exist can we end imperialism. See, the Black Panther Party was, this, was, was started to protect the black community because the black community needed protection, and it still does. That's why we're here. But as the Black Panther Party developed and grew in its ideology, Huey P. Newton made it plain, very plain, that there's no way that black people alone can win liberation in America. There's no way. We have to do it together. The same goes for stopping war. Now, mind you, we're very well aware that when it comes down to it, when actual liberation becomes a thing here in America, there's no way it's going to happen without violence. Because America took their power by violence. But that goes back to what I said before. In that juncture, it's liberation for people. That's not violence or self-defense, and to me, that's perfectly sane. Imperialist sanction war all over the globe is not sane. It's insanity, because the same thing has occurred repeatedly throughout the history of the world, and we have, not, we have seen no progress or evolution come from it. The only thing that's come from it is destruction. So ask yourself the most important question that you can ask today. All of this talking is cool. I like to hear a good speech now and then. I like to hear a good speech, read a nice pamphlet. Sit down for coffee or tea with people and throw around political ideas. It all sounds real cute. But what you do when you leave this space today, moving forward, is going to define what this actually means. If it ends here, this was absolutely nothing but a group of cool people that had the same idea that got together to talk to each other. If you're not asking yourself what's next, you are in the wrong place. You are with the wrong cause. And you are fighting the wrong fight. So when we say all power to the people, we mean
mean all power to all the people. That means black power for black people, white power for white people, uh, indigenous power to indigenous people, Haitian power to Haitian people. I don't care where you're from. I don't care what you look like. I don't care what you think is going to happen. The reality is we will all die. We will all suffer. We will all be insane that we do not make a concerted effort to stop imperialism in its tracks immediately. So now when I say it, I want to hear it back with some heart. All power to the people! All power to the people! All power to the people! Thank you, Bunchy. Appreciate that. Very powerful, very powerful. So if what you, the goal is, is to not let it end here, go talk to these folks back here. They have tables open. Remember that March 26th, 1 p.m., the Museum of Flight. Like he said, don't let this be the last time that you're involved. It's going to take all of us as a coalition to stop imperialism, because that's what we're all here for. So the next speaker is named alone, and there are students they are with the students for United for Palestine, Equality, and Return, or Super UW. It's a diverse student-led group for students, facility, and community members around the University of Washington in Seattle, working in solidarity with the struggle for Palestine liberation. Super UW understands the struggle for Palestine liberation is intimately entangled in global struggles for economic, social, and cultural justice, including struggles of other indigenous people around the world and structural inequality we face in our own country. They understand that the true definition of solidarity is an honest understanding that our own liberation is tied up in the liberation of others and that the oppressed must lead the struggle. Please welcome them now. Hello everyone, militant greetings, who's ready to get to work, who's ready to get to work rebuilding a fighting anti-war movement, yes, my name is Alon and I'm a member of Students United for Palestinian Equality and Return at the University of Washington. We're a youth and student organization dedicated to supporting the ongoing Palestinian National Liberation Movement and their right to return to their homeland, pushing back against imperialist and Zionist forces right here in Seattle. While organizing on campus for Palestine, we've sometimes heard about the alleged hypocrisy regarding the war in Ukraine and the U.S.'s response, that more attention is being paid to it than other sites of war. But this is not an accident. This is the result of a mobilization campaign for the war. It's not a matter of selective outrage. The imperialists are actively shaping and promoting racist perceptions in very specific ways. This perception management fits the needs of the US and NATO's preferred mode of war. What Obama, in reference to the occupation of Iraq, which is still ongoing, referred to as the so-called light footprint. Using imperialist proxies like the current Ukrainian government and the Zionist entity occupying Palestine. Social media companies like Alphabet, which owns Facebook and Instagram, and, sorry, like Alphabet, which owns Google, and Meta, which owns Facebook and Instagram, allow the pro-Nazi NATO propagandists and forces in Ukraine and in this country on social media to call for the murder of all Russians and the escalation of war, while banning Palestinians who defend their people's rights and honor their martyrs. Shame, that's right. They support an indiscriminate boycott and coercive sanctions to starve the Russian people while criminalizing all supporters of Palestine who advocate for the Palestinian-led boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement on Israel. Just this week, we heard that the ICC has issued arrest warrants for Russian officials after a very short investigation period, while it has still not even come close to a concluding an eight years long investigation into the Israeli occupation forces 
documented war crimes on the Palestinian people in Gaza eight years ago. Not to mention the impunity of the prosecutors of U.S. military atrocities on the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, both of which have been openly dropped by the ICC and from our public consciousness. But this is not hypocrisy. This is a consistent imperialist standard. In the Palestine Solidarity Movement, we know that Zionism and its aligned reactionary forces gives far more value to Western and Zionist lives than the lives of the indigenous Palestinian Arab people. And it is the same principle which motivates the U.S.'s offensives in all of the wars that the U.S. is waging abroad. In Iraq recently, masses of people have been consistently expressing their support for Palestine and their support for the Palestinian freedom fighters. They are calling on their own U.S. installed government to stop allowing Zionist and American occupation bases and oil sales. We should never forget that it is exactly this kind of internationalist solidarity that the U.S. hopes to smother with its wars. In the past year, there has been a concerted and systematic effort to recast anti-Semitism and racism as linked to supporting the liberation of Palestine. Palestinians, Arabs and Muslims in particular, while singled out for racist and exclusionary state policies, as well as racist state violence by fascist gangs and state officials, have been labeled anti-Semitic for seeking freedom. We see this again and again in the official rhetoric used to deport Palestinians, exclude them from residency, and fire them from their jobs. So anti-Zionism, the just cause of advocating for Palestinian liberation, has been equated with racism, with anti-Semitism. An anti-colonial movement has been equated with its opposite. An allegation of anti-Semitism, oftentimes in mainstream politics, is almost always in reality an allegation of just struggle of anti-Zionism. But this is nothing new, because the US and NATO and its cohorts have been openly funding and arming fascists and Nazis in Ukraine and are forming alliances with fascists internationally. They've even welcomed them into their halls of power. From Congress to the UN, they vote against even verbal condemnation of these US armed, funded, and backed Nazi forces. So today, all of these forces in our media, at UW and academic halls, minimizing Nazi crimes, repeating Nazi talking points, and putting Nazi symbols in the photos of so-called heroism, this is not a different matter than the criminalization and displacement of anti-Semitism on Palestinians struggling for liberation. It's part and parcel of the same project. The ADL, the Anti-Defamation League, considers my organization, Super, to be anti-Semitic and pro-terrorist for supporting Palestinian rights and resistance. At the same time, they also deny that Stefan Bandera and other historical and current Nazis that the U.S. backs in Ukraine are really anti-Semitic and terrorizing the masses of people in Ukraine and elsewhere. American politicians don't scapegoat Palestinians, Arabs, Muslims, and internationalists because of guilt over the Holocaust and Nazi crimes, although this is certainly used to manipulate the public. They don't attempt to push the redefinition of anti-Semitism as anti-Zionism, like here in the Seattle City Council, for instance, for these reasons. These forces are deeply engaged in NATO, in imperialist projects, in colonial extraction of resources, and yes, in alliance with Zionist colonization of Palestine, where over 88 Palestinians just this year have been murdered by the occupation forces. They are in fact shifting the burden of their history on to colonized people, whereby the real villains in anti-Semitic violence and persecution are not the Nazi regime and the Nazis in the past and today, the fascist forces and their capitalists who profit from them, but instead Palestinians, 
Arabs, Muslims, and all free peoples resisting imperialism and its wars. Once anti-Semitism means anti-Zionism, the road has been cleared to rehabilitate the actual perpetrators of anti-Semitic violence and to openly lionize and fund forces like Ukraine's Azov Brigade, and of course, to continue to intensify the colonization of occupied Palestine. Fighting back against fascism, our bosses, US wars of aggression, and upholding the Palestinian liberation struggle have always gone hand in hand. Making this clear is more critical than ever before at this moment. And to defend the peoples of the world from imperialism in Palestine, here, and everywhere. It is the same weapons profiteers and oil companies like Boeing and Chevron which profit the most from these wars and colonial occupations. Without government funding, the colonization of Palestine and all U.S. wars could not continue. At UW, we are proud to support Resist Seattle's UW campaign, UW Cut Ties of Boeing, which you can learn more about and participate in an action on March 26th that's been mentioned before. Because we know of the many ways that our struggle to stop U.S. war and U.S. funding for Israel's crimes is the same struggle as the struggle to fight and stop U.S. funding for the war in Ukraine. There are many connections that I could go into of how funding Israel has materially supported other U.S. wars in the Philippines, against Armenia, with Azerbaijan, in India, and yes, in Ukraine. One that I want to highlight very briefly is that Zelensky openly calls his model of a new Ukraine after the war to be based on Israel in interviews with the Zionist publication Haaretz. And that Israeli mercenaries and forces are currently arming and training Ukrainian forces, all funded, of course, and mediated by the United States. And so when our rights to defend our people, when our rights to oppose these wars are under attack, we must resist because it is our right to fight back against the U.S. war machine. Our rights that are undefended are rights that are surrendered. And so I want to leave you with that, and I want to leave you with a quick chant. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Thank you, everyone, and long live international solidarity. Thank you so much, Alone, and I, I want to do those chants again because I want to make sure this whole city knows where our convictions lie, that we support the Palestinian people and their liberation by any means necessary. So we're going to say, free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Long live Palestine! Long their liberation movements. It's something that we will never give up and we think is an integral part of the anti-war movement. And so I once again want to thank Alone and for everyone here because we're fighting for Palestinian liberation. Our next speaker is Zane. Um, he comes from the Freedom Road Socialist Organization, which is a revolutionary socialist organization in the United States. So please welcome them now. I'm Zane. I'm with Freedom Road Socialist Organization. And we're here today to talk about an end to imperialist war. That's right. But to do that, we need to know who our enemies are. As part of the vast majority of people in this world and as revolutionaries, I know who my enemy is. To the warmongers and capitalists who tell me I must look all the way across the world to find an enemy, I make $16.75 an hour. I'm sure there's somebody closer. I know who my enemy is. To those who say that conflicts in other countries just aren't our problem, 
problem and we should put America first. I say these are our problem and America is first only in global exploitation and global terrorism. The U.S. Empire is the number one enemy of the people of this world. Yeah. To our bosses who tell us to look to Moscow or to Iran or Beijing for our enemy, we have nothing to say. Our enemy is right here. I won't be fooled and we won't be fooled. The American Empire, which created the conditions for this war, the American Empire, which continues this war. I'm a proud rank and file member of my union. We don't sit across from Putin at the bargaining table. I sit across from a guy who lives on Mercer Island. There, there are 1,500 people right now in Tacoma locked up in a private ICE detention facility. They're locked up for crossing a border the U.S. created through war. I won't be told my enemy is in Moscow while ICE is in Tacoma. Our government has backed up the Zionist entity in Palestine in its genocidal campaign since its inception. Racist pigs crawl through our streets looking to arrest beat and kill. I won't be told my enemy is Beijing while killer cops walk free. We are in Amazon, Microsoft, and Boeing's backyard. I won't be told that their enemy should be our enemy. I will stand with workers, toilers, and the oppressed masses of this world until we're free. I'm not ashamed or embarrassed. I'm talking about revolution. I know who my enemy is. It's now just over a year after the invasion of Ukraine by Russia, but to say this conflict started in 2022 is an imperialist lie. In 2014, the U.S. backed a neo-Nazi, ultra-nationalist coup in Ukraine for the crime of doing business with Russia and refusing IMF loans. When people in the Donbas region wanted to leave Ukraine, the coup government responded with bombs. This forced both Russia and Ukraine towards war. But 2014 was not the start. Thirsting for profits, American imperialists have attempted to gain control of the resources of both Russia and Ukraine for a long time. Looking back, we can see decades of imperialist meddling leading to this conflict. From the dissolution of the Soviet Union, the installation of Boris Yeltsin, the economic shock therapy in the former Soviet Union, which led to millions of deaths and the birth of monopoly capitalism in Russia, this conflict we see today is not just an imperialist conflict we should oppose as international communists, but an American conflict that we should oppose because we're here. American imperialists take their resources, land, labor, and people from wherever they go and leave behind nothing but blood and craters. Whether this means open war, covert war, or economic war, the result is the same. The current involvement of the U.S. and other NATO states in foreign wars will not be aimed as viewing as going towards peace when their plans and wars have led to millions of deaths abroad, all orchestrated in corporate boardrooms, congressional meetings, and foreign policy nonprofits, probably in some of the skyscrapers around us right now. The U.S. plan is the same it's always been. Escalation of conflict and war in order to promote the interests of the monopoly capitalists this government serves. To spend money on war and destruction while 30 million in this country don't have enough food. Billions for bombs while public schools are defunded. To talk of democracy and freedom while reproductive rights are smashed. LGBTQ rights are taken away. Voting rights are taken away and affirmative action is banned. Cultural studies are forced out of schools. Fuck that! To talk of self-determination while oppressed nations within the U.S. are crushed under the thumb of racism and imperialism. But there's good news. There's very good news. The U.S. Empire is dying. The U.S. Empire was kicked out of Afghanistan last year. The U.S. Empire is dying. They're whispering it in executive meetings at Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and the IMF. The U.S. Empire is dying. They're talking about it in D.C., in Congress, in their nonprofits around the world. The U.S. Empire is dying. 
China just helped negotiate a ceasefire in Yemen. The U.S. Empire is dying. The U.S. Empire is dying. The Bolivarian Revolution in Venezuela is holding strong against economic sanctions. The Cuban Revolution has held out for over 60 years against sanctions. The U.S. Empire is dying. Revolutionaries in the Philippines are screaming it. Freedom fighters in Palestine are saying it. The U.S. Empire is dying. The U.S. Empire is dying. We're yelling it from the picket lines. Oppressed people across the world are winning the fight for liberation. The U.S. Empire is not only dying, it's being killed. Whoa! The U.S. Empire will fall. The oppressed peoples of this world will be free. And an end to the global domination of U.S. imperialists is just a step on the road to socialism, to peace to a society that is not just built by the people, but a society that is built for the people. A blow to U.S. imperialists is a victory for all of us in the world. Death to imperialism, death to NATO, long live international solidarity, long live, long live, long live, I'm with Freedom Road Socialist Organization. We're organizing for revolution in the streets, in the unions, in the workplaces, in the schools. Come join the fight. Thank you. Thank you, Zane, for that passionate display there. We appreciate that, and we want to keep it to know that the true folks that we're fighting against today and our true people that we are standing up against is imperialism. And so I appreciate that that highlighted that and to let it know that it's not just coming from one area, but imperialism in general is what we're, what we're against. So that was almost like a poem, like it felt like a poem and that was great because I don't even have to write a segue because we have the next person coming up is an artist. And uh, something that Answer believes in is the essential component of art and music in the struggle against wars. At the National March happening in the war in this, it, happening in Washington, D.C., there was a whole contingent of artists who used their work to advance anti-war struggle. And today, we are happy to have Jim Page here also to do that with a musical performance. So we'll let Jim Page get set up and welcome Jim Page. Make sure this is working here. Right on time. We are born of nature, and in nature we will die, oh, and if we don't make it, it's not because we didn't try, no, it's not because we didn't try. They say they will incorporate the world, oh, my dead body, oh, my dead body, oh, my dead body. We have the will, and I would rather be a match than a paper dollar bill. Yes, I would. Yes, I would. They have the guns. All they are is flesh and blood. But we will multiply our numbers and drown them in our flood. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. They say they will incorporate the world. Over my dead body, over my dead body, over my dead body, over my dead body. They have the power, that's what they say, that we will have 
tap their power. And we will go ahead anyway. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. If they stay, they will incorporate the world. It's a good day to start wandering around and making a whole bunch of things happen. But it's also a good day to stand out in public and sing, you know what I'm saying? And a song like this feels kind of good. It's kind of like a fist in your vocal cords, you know what I'm saying? If they stay, they will incorporate the world. Over my dead body, over my dead body, over my dead body, over my dead body. You can call me a fool. That's all right with me. I will live to see this good round world breaking free. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. If they say they will incorporate the world. Over my dead body, over my dead body, over my dead body, over my. If they say they will incorporate the world. Thank you.